Greetings all, Nick and Justin here from Those Hairy Gamers. How are you, Mr. Justin? I'm doing well. I'm suited up. You are suited up. You are dressed very well. That's right. You had a um, job interview this morning, didn't you? I did. Excellent, excellent. So I'm here in my tracky dax and polar fleece, and Justin is here <laughs> in a pinstripe suit. <laughs> Wonderful. We're back to do another X-Wing upgrade tech video. Today we're going to do Han Solo because we had this request from Luke Milano. Han Solo crew question mark. Um, and I'm glad we had this question asked because we have a lot of these particularly rebel crews that came out in the first few waves that are a bit problematic and I just want to have a chat about this kind of stuff. Basically, okay. the point I want to make, and I made this point in a previous video, is FFG is made up of several departments that make a game. There's an R&D department, there's a development yeah. department, there's, a, there's, a, there's an art department, all that kind of stuff. But basically... These are all people that design these cards, and sometimes that system just produces bad pilots or ships or upgrades or whatever. Although, yes. to be fair, the artwork in this is... Oh, the, oh, the artwork's fantastic. The, the artwork department got this card right. Absolutely. Before we go into anything else, I just want to say the art's awesome. The way this thematically is joined to Lando and Dengar is awesome. Yeah. So big props to the art on this card. Functionally, in the game, this is terrible. Um, there's no two ways about it. Um, I, I, I can I can sense all the commenters cracking their knuckles ready to go out actually on their keyboards. And I just I will justify my reasoning behind that. But I just want to say that don't feel disheartened the fact that we have bad things in this game. Like it's the pretty much the nature of a game. We do yeah. have a bit of power creep in this game, so old cards tend to become less relevant. Having said that, a lot of old cards and pilots do really well these days. Like, we're still seeing a lot of Biggs and Vader from Wave 1, and that's fantastic to see. But we're not seeing any of this Han Solo crew card. Indeed, we're not seeing a lot of the old Rebel crew, like Han, Leia, and Luke. Uh, which actually brings me on to a point. I, I think it's very strange that we're seeing that these cards are falling out of favour. Well, that, that's not strange in itself, but... Mm. What's strange to me is the fact that we're not getting any updated versions of these cards. Yeah. I've, like you could have um, an episode 7 Han Solo. Absolutely, yeah. Or a young Han not, from the new movie. Yeah. In fact, I'm hoping that FFG changed their tack when it comes to the Han Solo movie and we get an updated version of this card. Well, they had cards for Rogue One and stuff like that, so they should have cards for... Absolutely. I mean, they're all unique stuff from yeah. Rogue One. It wasn't any reprints of existing crew or ships or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I really hope if, if anyone from FFG is watching and it would be a miracle if they did, but if anyone from FFG is watching, like, please give us updated versions of these crew cards. Cause the fact of the matter is we have these iconic characters just not getting played. Yeah. And what is getting played is the very newest stuff, which tends to be the sort of the more fringe EU stuff, which is fine. Like I, I love Captain Nim. He's a really cool character and everything. But he's not he's not a core character from the movies. I mean let's let's face facts. Yeah. I think everyone wants to see X Wings and TIE Fighters and Han and Luke and Vader and all that kind of stuff permeating throughout the game for pretty much the game's entire life. That's mm. not a bad thing. And updating and giving us newer versions of these cards is a great way of doing that. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let's move on. Let's actually talk about what makes this bad. There are two big points I want to bring up here, and that is what makes a card bad. And what makes this card bad based on those factors? First of all, what makes a card bad? Well, there's a few factors here. Um, if you have a certain upgrade slot or pilot slot at a certain points range, um, uh, fitting into a certain slot that can be used by other things that can just be better filled. That, mm -hmm. That's a big, big factor. So from that point of view, we have to think about what Han is doing at the two squad point cost in the crew slot. We also have to think on a base level, how is this functioning and is it going to make an impact on the game? And again, Han kind of fails in this regard as well. So first of all, before we go into those justifications, let's read the card itself. Han Solo costs two squad point cost, rebel only, he is a crew card. When attacking, if you have a target lock on the defender, you may spend that target lock to change all your eyeball results to hit results. Okay, so basically it turns your target lock into a focus attack, is a mm. way of thinking about this. Now, it's worth noting that sometimes FFG kind of get functions wrong within their cards, and they tend to say, hey, that was a cool idea, but we got it wrong, let's make it better later on. And I think that's what they've done with Expertise. Yeah. Expertise is an EPT, which does not require you to spend a target lock, but it turns all your eyeball results into hit results. And that's pretty significant. I think Expertise is a much better version of this function. I was about to say, that just sounds better all around. Indeed. It costs four points, and you can't be stressed to use it. But those caveats are 
a lot better than having to spend a target lock every single time. I think most people will agree. Well, not only that, having you get an open crew slot as well. You exactly right. Else there. Exactly right. And that brings me on to my previous point is this takes up a crew slot, and especially on the Rebel faction. There are so many really good crews. If you spend one more point, you have Kanan Jarrus, Kyle Katan. For the same point cost, you have like Jan Ors. Um, there's Zeb and Chopper, which are actually cheaper than this guy. And there's just way better options. Yeah. Just way better options. And this is also a factor. He costs two points. He's not doing two points worth of work. I'm sorry, he's just no. not. No. Um, basically, here's the whole thing with a target lock. You spend a target lock to make your attack better. Just spending your target lock to make your attack better is, on average, just about as good as Han Solo's ability. Yeah. So he's almost giving you no discernible benefit, except in the rare situations where you happen to roll a lot more focus than blanks, which is a sort of a 50-50 chance. There's yeah. two blanks and two focus on every single die. So the odds of that happening are pretty even. So unfortunately, to get real benefit out of Han, you have to attack, 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 attack every single game. And you have to have these sort of not great odds things happening. I mean, the reality is if you just have lots of target locks and you spend them over and over again, you're probably going to get roughly the same results. Mm. It's just not strong. It's just not strong. So say you're rolling four dice, you get one hit and three focus. That is pretty much the best situation for Han. You can turn those three focus into three hits. The odds of rolling one hit and three focus are quite low. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if you spend the target lock, you still might have gotten three hits off those three focuses. Just saying that, is is that worth two points? No, no. it's not. It's not. If Han costs zero points, Ooh. I'd be still on the fence. I'd be still on the fence because he takes yeah. the crew slot. Yeah. And crew slots are so valuable. If he costs zero points, you could then put him into a list that couldn't afford to have anything else. And that is kind of a justification. So basically, at its core level, it's a very, very light buff to attacks in very, very rare situations. Honestly, you take this to a tournament, I think you're going to get benefit out of it maybe one or two times. Yeah. It's just the odds are that low. And to prove it to you, right now, on camera, I'm going to show you how bad these odds just are. Okay, so we are back on my dice rolling table of glory. So, to work out how to differentiate the odds of using a regular target lock as opposed to using the Han Solo target lock, we're going to do some dice rolling testing. We're going to do a set of 15. If you guys watch my Cad Bane versus Sabine video, you know what this is all about. Basically, I'm going to roll a dice. I'm going to say, okay, if we use the target lock on Han's ability, we would get X result. And if we use the target lock regularly, we would get this result instead. So we're going to do 15 of these all up. I'm going to walk you through the first three so we just know what's going on here. So number one, here we go. Okay. If we were to use the Han Solo target lock here, that would be converted into a regular hit result, increasing the overall result by one. On a regular target lock, we re-roll it. And as you can see, between Han and the regular target lock, there is no discernible difference. Roll number two. I spend my Han to increase this by one, or I spend a target lock to re-roll both of these, and we increase it by zero. In this instance, Han wins. And on the third one, uh, we can increase this by one with the Han target lock or regular target lock is the same result. Okay, I'm going to continue this up to 15 times and then work out the results at the end. Here we go. So number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Cool. Thirteen. Fourteen. And 15. Cool. No change there with other target lock. I'd also just like to add that I did this test with three dice. You could do it with two or four. The odds would not change dramatically if you did. And that is the justification I have behind Han Solo just not being great. Um, yeah, you can yeah. see from the video. 
It, it just doesn't quite work. The odds don't quite stack up. He does occasionally give you slightly better odds, but for a crew slot and two points, he's mm. not pulling his weight by mm. a long shot. Definitely. So, well, so what's our answer to this, guys? What do we want? We want FFG to make new updated versions of Hound Solo. That pretty much has to be a thing. I think it's a big detriment to the game that these iconic characters just aren't pulling their weight. And I'm hoping with the new Han Solo movie, that happens. Yeah. Here's the thing. And a lot of people are talking about this. Han Solo, when he's young, was not on the Rebels, of course. And everyone's saying, oh, we'll have a scum Han. I don't love that idea. But I'm a scum player myself, and I think <laughs> Han thematically is just so Rebel. Mm. You know, he's a, he's a champion of the Alliance. And in the Han Solo movie, obviously there will not be a rebellion. So even putting him on the rebel faction within the context of the movie feels fine to me. Because he would be the only thing from that movie on the rebel faction. Yeah, he's the one good guy in the movie. However, however, my point is, if we happen to have a scum Han, we could have a Han that isn't rebel only. We could make a Han that's YT-1300 only. I like that. We could think about functions that work well on scum and rebel. Um, it's kind of like in Magic how we have two colour cards. Yeah. And those uh, cards have to justify their position on both their colours. We could have cards that have to function well on both factions. Mm. That could be quite interesting. Well, we're getting something like that with the Darth Maul card. Yeah, which is like scum only. Um, um, I had a chat to the guys from Hell of a Pilot. Yeah. And Lockie from Hell of a Pilot had a great idea. It could be scum only or Ezra Pilot only or crew only like mm. he must fly with Ezra unless he's on the scum faction yeah which is an interesting idea we could have a similar thing with Han going on here which would be quite cool yeah but instead of having another person just have it only on that ship I like that idea thematically it makes sense it does it does um, however I believe that in the Han Solo movie and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments it has the story about how he got the Falcon mm. how he won it off Lando who is played by a uh, young Donald Glover. So we'll have uh, so maybe I, a new, I can't wait for Donald Glover. I know, it's gonna be really good. And that might mean a new Lando card as well, which would be mm. really cool. Mm. Um, Lando is actually one of the more usable uh, old rebel cards. He came in the YT twenty four hundred pack, and he has the action you roll two green dice, and every eyeball result you get a focus token, every evade result you get an evade token. It's yeah. very interesting. It it plays into whole uh, uh, Lando's whole gambling addict thing yeah. which is quite clever it thematically fits um, which brings me back to Han uh, Han doesn't fit thematically I, I want a Han that, that does really risky stuff I want a yeah. Han that um, that ba- shoots first and asks questions later I want a Han crew that when he flies into an asteroid you roll a dice on a hit result you completely ignore the asteroid stuff oh, like that oh that, that'd be cool like think of the flavour think of what's going on with this unfortunately this card is a failure on function and flavour great artwork yep but that's literally all it has going for it and I feel like we could be doing a lot more with these old characters look seriously mm. FFG Han Luke Leia Let's get new versions of all those characters, please. Um, I feel like the way the expansions are coming out is very linear. We have new ships. Sometimes old pilots come onto new ships, but yeah. we, we're very, they're very strict. Only have one version of every crew, or they evolve the stack of upgrades in a very linear way. Mm. We're only adding new things on, and I don't like that. I feel like you could just have um, one model with a bunch of random cards that fit a function. You could have, like, um, for example, the Rebels TV show. You could have Ezra's Y-Wing in a model and just a bunch of upgrade cards that goes with it that, yeah. that fit on all kinds of Rebel ships. Yeah. It's not just a Y-Wing upgrade pack. It's a, it's a Rebels expansion yeah. upgrade pack that has lots of uh-huh. cool cards that go with that. Yeah. And we could do a similar thing with the Han Solo movie, and that's a great way to get existing characters in the game a bit of a fresh look. And also, it's a great way of boosting up these old ships without having to make ace packs. There are more ways we could be playing around with the format, and FFG should really look at this. And nothing shines a lot in that more than the fact that we have cards like Hound Solo just not pulling his weight. Yep. It's a real shame. It's a real shame. And look, guys, if you think he's good, tell me in the comments. Tell me your justification. Give but, us some ship builds where you think that he excels in. Exactly right. Um, I'd love to hear about it. But I just, with all the justifications I'm using, I just think mathematically he is just really, really bad. And I'm sorry, Luke Milano. Um, I know you obviously wanted to have some good builds for Han. I have a feeling you looked at your folder, you saw Han and said, oh, I want to play Han. Han's cool. And that's my attitude as well. 
I want to play these iconic characters, but we have this issue with the um, the pool of cards currently. And I didn't want to make this video just one big rant. I'm hoping that FFG take on these suggestions and we have a bit more interest and flavor added into the game so yeah. these issues aren't issues anymore. I think they're taking a lot of really good steps lately. I think um, they've really made a good point of trying to scale back power creep. Yep. We haven't had anything truly broken since the Jump Master, which is good. We might, fingers crossed, have a nerf for the Jump Master coming out soon. No, no comment on that until we have something official. Yep. And I think addressing the issue with these old stale cards would be a great way of moving forward and really enhancing the game. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye.